Well, joining us to discuss all this is Daily Mail columnist Sarah Vine, making her uncensored debut, long overdue, I might add, <laughs> especially given how uncensored you are, Miss Vine. Talk to me, contributor Esther Krakow. I'm a socialist author, Grace Blakely. Do you like being called that? Of course I do. I'm a proud socialist. You know that. You used to call me Moe Marxist, which was also quite fun. You, don't sound, <laughs> you just don't sound like it. You sound like the poshiest socialist ever. Well, yeah, obviously. That's yeah. where Moe Marxist comes from. No, I know. I get it. it just, <laughs> Socialism with class. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Esther. <laughs> do you want to be my, my agent? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. You don't want that. You have to right. deal with peers all the time. Let's get to more serious matters, ladies. Uh, it's a great panel for this because, Sarah, let's start with you. Luis Rubiales got carried away. He admits it, right? And he's very frank about this in our interview tomorrow. And we go over everything at length. But what followed is now being categorised as sexual assault. Mm. Is that what we all witnessed? Well, I mean, all I can say is I've just seen the same clip that everybody else has seen, which is him sort of overexcited, grabbing her and giving her a big smack on the lips. And I can't say that... I didn't think there was an iota of sexualness in that. Sexualness? Mm. Sexuality, sexiness, right. whatever. I don't think it was sexual in any way. He was just very overexcited and just wanted to give her a big kiss on, on the lips because she'd done so brilliantly. Mm. I mean, everybody was kissing everybody. They were yeah. kissing the trophy. They the were Spanish. kissing each other. <laughs> exactly. There was just a lot of kissing mm. going on. It was quite kissy. I mean, I thought it was a bit vulgar that he grabbed his testicles in front of the Queen. Yeah, and, I suppose, and the you know, Queen's 16-year-old. Yeah, and, and by the way, we discussed but, that, and he's very, you know, he's very open about how again, he feels about that, and that may surprise people. But, but in relation to Jenny Hermosa, right, she is having the best moment of her career, mm -hmm. but for the next three weeks after that moment of crowning glory of them winning the World Cup, all that anyone has talked about is her being grabbed by the president of her football association with both hands yeah. and snogged on the lips. Now, to put it in perspective, if Prince William, who's the president of our football association, yeah. if when the Lionesses had won the Euros a couple of years ago, if when that had happened, William had done that to the captain of the Lionesses, I think all hell would have broken loose. It could be an incentive also for them to do really well and win the <laughs> if, I mean, if you, you look know. like Henry Cavill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Obviously, there's a cultural issue here because if this was the men's team and he, as a male manager, did that, they would have no problem because men footballers. And I asked him that. I asked him about if it had been the men's team, would he have done the same exactly. thing? And his answer is really interesting. So it is complicated. It's, it's more it's, nuanced it's than people issue. think. Exactly. It's, it's how it's how men. It's it's kind of brought into sexual dynamics and the minefield yeah. that it's now is. How it's now brought it to light. But I think because what's happened the, is this horrible sort of wormy sort of. Fit me too -y thing has yeah. got to her, hasn't it? Because she, she, you saw from the bus video, she doesn't seem that upset. Yeah, they were all well, sort of you shouting. Don't know what's well, going okay, on in that context? Only, I mean, mean, look, they, they, they clearly, but, they clearly noticed the fact that something got wrong because they were chanting "kiss, kiss, kiss." They, they were obviously like, "This is a bit way. weird." They, it was the equivalent. Well, she's looking in that yeah, video on the this is on the bus <laughs> after they've left the stadium as world champions. They're all celebrating and drinking. She's looking actually at the split screen on her phone. One is Ike Casillas, the former Spanish goalkeeper, who had a similar kiss with a woman TV reporter who turned out to be his girlfriend or wife or whatever. And the other half is her being kissed by Rubiales. And they're all laughing and joking and chanting Bezo, Bezo, which is kiss, 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 and then Prezi, Prezi, right? It doesn't, on the face of it, look like they're all in trauma from yeah, his really. assault. Well, I mean, I, the, the point isn't whether or not they've been traumatised, and we can throw around this word isn't trauma it? as though... Isn't it? ..as though all sexual assault is supposed to kind of break a human being down to their very core and they're, like, lying on the ground crying. That's not how sexual assault happens. You know, you experience it in the moment. It's often shocking at first. At first, you maybe don't even process what's going on. You're mm. a bit like, oh, someone's touched me in a strange way, but I don't want to make a fuss about it because I'm on the tube or I'm in a public space mm. or I've just won the Women's World Cup. So you kind of go along, and then eventually someone's like, oh, was that a bit strange? And you're like, yeah, maybe it was a bit weird when that happened to me, mm. actually. Maybe I would have liked that situation to have taken place but a bit differently. Know, you know, and I think that's clearly what's happened the, the, the here. Because ultimately, here is... I just quickly want to say this yeah. before we, we go on. The only thing that mattered after this happened was that um, he lost the support of his team and he overtook all of the publicity that had happened well, that that about this positive event. Think, if and that's what really should said, have been the crux. He should have stepped down that, for that reason. Well, I don't think he should have stepped down, but I think for most people watching that, the fact that he kissed all of them, basically, he didn't yeah, single if, her out. Yeah. Uh, if he just apologised, exactly. this would have gone away. He... And remember how he reacted initially. So on the night, and I played this to him in the interview, you know, he... he well, I, I reminded him what he said, but he calls everyone that criticises him dumbasses and mm, blah, blah, yeah, exactly. He really goes on the attack, because mm. I think he genuinely is completely taken about anyone would have a problem with it, right? Yeah. And I think that that's sincere. I think he just had no idea what he'd done. 
I think watching it, I was trying to think this morning, you know, I was talking to my wife about it, and say, like somebody you don't know that well. I mean, he does know them well, so it's a complicated thing, but if somebody came up and just kissed you on the lips, yeah. who's not your partner and not a, a member of your family or something, and even then, depending on the family member, it's weird, just, right? Just... Um, but I know people that have done that to me at parties sometimes, and you're like, what have you just done? Yeah. Why are you kissing me on the lips? It is, it is whether he meant any sexual intent yeah. is one thing. But it's one thing. I don't, I don't think he did. But, but it still has a kind of sexual element to it. But I think, it? I think it's not the same as, as someone coming up to you randomly and just kiss, kissing you on the lips. There was an event going on. Yeah. Everybody was celebrating. But he doesn't kiss any of the others on the lips. Well, I don't know. Maybe he... Well, maybe he doesn't. He, just he, got so he hugs them all and he kisses yeah. them on but the I cheek. I think you're right. I think if he had just said, look, I'm really sorry, I was just in the moment, yeah. I really didn't mean anything. He had a macho uh, moment yeah, he did have, where he Because just... I think he was just... Uh, maybe his mother who went on hunger strike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Which, by the way, my mother... I was with my mother at the weekend and she <laughs> affirmed... In similar circumstances, she would also go on. Oh, hungry. really? <laughs> has she not had to do that yet? <laughs> really she has come, I think, quite close. <laughs> she actually thought it was a good idea for my next inevitable scrape. Yeah. That she go on a media hunger strike. But also, the other thing is, is there was no subterfuge to it. I mean, I, I mean, I get what you say about sexual assault, but I tend to think that if people have got malicious intentions, they don't do it. In front they of don't the do it in front of the camera. camera. I think planet. this is an important point, right? Yeah. Because whether or not you know, we can have this debate. Where, was it sexual? Did he mean to do something? I don't think that he probably meant to do something overtly sexual in front of that massive crowd that he thought was going to yeah, get in exactly. trouble. Exactly. But it's kind of not the point. The point is about bodily autonomy. It's about who is allowed oh, Grace, to touch here's, you. Grace, here's in... the question. Should he have lost his job over it? No. For, for the kiss. Never mind the fallout, but the Well, I mean, kiss. I think the moment... If he had done the kiss and the players had come out and said, we were fine with this, it was a common thing that we do all the time, it's quite normal, culturally it's, it's appropriate and it's fine, whatever, then that would have been one thing. The fact is that that wasn't what happened. They came out eventually after, you know, a period of reflection mm. and said, we're not comfortable with this, we're not okay with this. And ultimately, the only thing that matters is that he lost their confidence. And she did this say, to be fair to Jenny... This game yeah, about to, them. And to be fair to Jenny Hermosa, there, she is heard saying on the night, I didn't like it. Yeah. Right? So... I don't think she's, you know, I think she's probably wrestling with what this is really happening. I think he gave her a special gift because she scored the goal. Mm. Like, I think that was it. Like, because we mentioned that he didn't kiss <laughs> anyone else on the list. I'm like, you want it? Oh, you are a superstar. <laughs> you are particularly like, brilliant. You, you know what yeah, I mean? I, I, okay, I, but, I, but I, let me I, ask you. So, Grace, so you think he should have lost his job? I think when he lost the confidence of the team, then he should have stepped down. There's right, so 81 no members of the women's team and then the men joined in, they weren't going to play again if he was so present. So the position becomes rapidly okay. untenable. It's just, yeah, but obvious. should it now be considered a crime? She is now well, pushing no. for him to be well, prosecuted. Is... She had 14 days to decide if she wanted to be party to him being criminally prosecuted, and she took that option. Now, that's where I... In this whole story, I'm like, hang on, hang on. Well, he, all right, he loses his job. He was inappropriate and wrong. He's admitted that. He's not hiding it. We all saw what happened, mm -hmm. right? But is this really a criminal act? Well, look, we had... Uh, the last time I was on the show, when you were away, discussing this topic, there was a Spanish football journalist on who was talking about the context for this. And this is really important because Spain had recently passed a law the, outlining the ways in which it was and wasn't appropriate to touch women, to touch people... Uh, in, you know, in the context mm. of sexual harassment. And this was seen as coming after the passing of this law, which said you're not allowed to touch or kiss people in these ways without their consent. Mm. And if you do, then, you know, he action can be taken He, just to. to be clear, so it, just to be clear, and he reflects <coughs> this in our interview, he believes that she did give consent for the kiss. Now, she says otherwise, but he is adamant that she did. So there's a well, clear... Well, that obviously... Is there's a he said, question. she said, right? And it may be impossible to get to the bottom of that. Well, it's very difficult because you're dealing with passionate moments. People don't tend to fill in forms in triplicate asking for consent right. when, they're, when yeah. their blood is up or when they're over... Well, let me give an example. Look, last week, time. Paul Gascoigne yeah. met Prince William randomly mm. at a homeless event down in Bournemouth where he lives. And he just went up and kissed Prince William, mm. right? I don't remember him asking him if he could, no. right? Well, so, thing... in other words, this kind of interaction... It, you know, it did make me feel like... I'll be honest, it made me feel a bit uncomfortable watching what he was doing. Yeah. And I think when he looks back on it, and the crotch grabbing in front of the Queen and her 16-year-old daughter, it, it, I, no thanks. This is a ridiculous way for a president of a football association to behave on the biggest stage in the world, particularly when your team's just won. Yeah. Yeah. But what are you doing? It's not about you. Um, but I can buy into the idea he just got completely carried away because they won the World Cup. I don't know what, what the if do. Arsenal win the Premier League next season, well, this season jump on I don't know who I may jump up and kiss <laughs> randomly. But I, mean, the I sincerely hope none of you are in my proximity. <laughs> but footballers sort of practically assault each other on exactly. the pitch. Well, it's it's rugby I think you, know, you have to again, like, learn to. We have, we have to separate intention 
from the outcome. I was just about and to ultimately, say. the law is done, and that's what we're talking about right now. It's not done based on intention, really, other but than no, in certain is, cases. There, no, no, but that's other wrong. Than in that's wrong. Great, great. That's wrong. Great. Notwithstanding, I think you make some very good points. Unusually, I have to say, um, <laughs> <laughs> which I can almost buy into. Uh, just in your gut, do you think he was trying to make any kind of assault on her? or had any sexual motive for what he I did? I don't think this was about sex. And actually, I don't think that a lot of sexual assault cases are about sex. We know they're not. They're often they're about, about power. power. I knew you were going to say are. that. I they are about... Well, I mean, well, he, was, he was the president of the Football Association yeah. there. I mean, it's there's no doubt there is a power dynamic. He is, he's often, the ultimate boss, right? Exactly. It's about men thinking that they have some sort of hold or charge or mm. ownership over another person's body. Um, and sometimes that has a sexual element to it, sometimes it doesn't, but it's often just an unthought of... Does it, all right, but Sarah, Sarah, does it... What if does it in a, in a strange way... Look, it may be a conversation women have to have, by the way, right, with each other about this, because whenever men poke their heads into this, it's a bit of a yeah, bear the I do. I've thought for a while... Because Me Too was so extreme in the way yeah. that it sort of lacerated people, and then it, I, you felt like the pendulum swung back a little bit, and it was a conversation women had to have amongst themselves about, well, what do we really think about this? My question would be about this, is if we perceive what he did, knowing what we know and knowing he did it all in the full glare of the world's media, uh, if we perceive that to be a sexual crime, are we diminishing what many people would see are much more serious yes, I sexual think, I crimes. Think, I think you are. I think absolutely that is definitely the case. I think a lot of these... Uh, with Me Too, there's, as with all these things, there's always a real grain of truth. Mm. It always comes from somewhere. Mm. It doesn't just happen out of nowhere. But what happens is people grab onto it and then it becomes a sort of crazy thing and then even the tiniest thing is not allowed. It does seem like and it has just, just gone too yeah, far, yeah. Yeah. I think. It's a bit like the trans thing, you know. Mm. There's, a, there's a really serious issue there that's very yeah. important for a very small number of people, but then it turns into a kind of massive row and yeah. culture wars and it's a disaster. Right. I, I think that, you know, there's an element in which <laughs> there's, uh, there's a parallel in the sense that most of the time, the boundary is fairly clear, right, in terms of what is and isn't sexual assault. And yet, we often see the situation where the media picks up and goes with, for a very, very long time, a kind of a, an edge case, a fringe yeah. case, a, fringe, a case where you're like, oh, was this or wasn't this? And then that's used to undermine the processes and systems that are used to, let's say, support trans people or prosecute sexual assault. And now we live in a country, bear in mind, where 99% of rape cases just... There's, there's no justice for the victims whatsoever. And that's partly because of the way our legal system's broken I mean, down. The unusual, the, unusual, the unusual thing here is we all saw what happened. Yeah. Right? So there's nothing that we need... There's nothing more to see, really. I mean, yeah. there's a bit of interaction, he says, from some slightly different angles, where he says that she lifted him up and he says, can I give you a peck? Yeah. And she says, yes. And maybe she didn't hear that. Maybe she misunderstood him. Maybe it's just a complete breakdown in communication... But certainly, if you look at the events afterwards in the dressing room where they're all partying, on the bus where they're all partying, I, you just don't get a sense I mean, that anyone they're... thinks something really bad's gone down here. But in a way, this is a microcosm of what happens in a lot of these cases, which is that, you know, he doesn't think he's done anything wrong. Mm. He, he's misread the signals, clearly. Yeah. She, because she says she's a victim, we now have to say you are a, You're victim. a victim. Yeah. But, she, but I don't think she's a I victim. Think, I think maybe uh, other people don't. Uh, so then, so then we get to this awful thing where everybody is like, well, you can't say she's not a victim because mm. she is yeah. a victim because she says she's a victim. But you say, but I see, I saw what yeah. happened. Who, who yeah. commits sexual assault? Yeah. On, on and I, and I. Well, look, talking of victims, is. I do want to just take a bit of time out for Mr. Bates. It's been a great debate, by the way.